All right, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are on another expedition, and we are heading out to what could be a proposed tomb. It is a uh, very innocuous cave that's in the side of a cliff, and the location will remain unknown for security reasons, so uh, <laughs> don't even think about asking. We won't tell. We potentially have something found here, and it's going to take a lot of excavation on our part. And on this journey, myself and Mondo Gonzalez of Prophecy Watchers, along with uh, one of the local guides, uh, his name is Wayne, we are heading out to this area, and what potentially is in this tomb could be of a gigantic scale. Now, it as you watch, we, we removed, man, at least a ton of weight. Uh, over 200 bucketfuls of five-gallon buckets of rock and debris, dirt, just thick clay, nasty stuff to dig through. We broke shovels and other tools, had to stop at one point at around noon and go to a true value store and go pick up some better shovels. And then we got back into it. Now... You know, this video is what it is. It's, it's short. I don't have very many pictures attached with it, but uh, we're thinking that whatever is at the very back part of this chamber, we're getting positive airflow coming out of very cold air. It goes further and goes deeper, and we'll have to come back to continue the excavation. But for right now, this is what we got. This is what we did. Leave your comments below. Do you think it's a tomb? Like, like 10 feet down, you said? Yeah, yeah. 20 feet down? Seven. Seven, seven feet, feet down? According to my death fire. According to the death fire. So that only needed a few steps to get up here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to hold this here. I want this anchor rope. You see the anchor rope under your foot? Yeah. There's a knot. I want it slid underneath the far side of the opening. To where I don't lose the boat again. Because the anchors. If the wind gets up, they're not going to hold. I hope so. Can't get. There's a knot on it. Back here. Throw the anchor up in there. Now, up that one. This, oh, like that. Yeah. Okay, that'll work. Okay. And then, uh, it looks like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Make sure we... Document, document, document. Always document. Okay. Mondo, just for a point of reference. Yep. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's move this stuff out of view back in here. The less people that bother us, the better off we are. Yeah, I agree. Right. Let me have that. See if I can get... Uh, Here we go. What do you think? Yeah, looks good. So you can almost make like a little bit of a chain. This log, did you put this? Um, will you hand me my, um, this is real archaeology right here, man. Fill them buckets. 
definitely charcoal. All right, can you move to the side so mm -hmm. you can let people see? You see that right here? Right there. So what's charcoal mean? Charcoal means, let's see if I can see this, it means human habitation. All right. Let's see if I can go like this. Come on. I'll tell you what else it can there be. There it is. See that? Right there. I'll tell gonna... you what else it can be. That's charcoal right there. All right. I'll tell you what else it can be. Sometimes they burn the bodies. Yeah, we found that actually in Arkansas. Yeah. There's a couple different... Spade's done. Yeah, it's done. That's what it freaking broke on. Alright, Doug, talk to me. What do we got here? A little bit of progress. Sorry. Dig this one area out so that we have a place to set the bucket. It's working so far. Yeah, you got a great uh, little video going here of you. Uh, yeah, you're doing look at those sides. Those sides are great. Uh, you see that black? All that charcoal. Oh, yeah. Obviously, good. fire somewhere in here. Okay, so we're in a hole in the ground. <laughs> in the side of a cliff. In the side of a cliff. Uh, we're, we're not disclosing where we're at, but this is a man-made lake. So seven feet down from here would have been the ground. And then rivers about 30 meters out ran together. And that's what this original area was. So we're in a cliff face, you know, almost 10 feet off the ground, depending on where you're standing at. And it looks like we're in a burial chamber. And we've probably been digging for what, a couple hours? Yeah, at least a couple hours. Uh, at least a hundred buckets worth of sediment and rock. And it has been backbreaking. <laughs> but this is what real archeology span is yeah. about. And we have, you know, Mondo Gonzalez, the, a real uh, no joke archeologist. So Mondo, is this normal? Is this what you guys normally would be doing? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, when you watch Indiana Jones and uh, he comes upon you know, places that are already somehow exposed or excavated and, you know, those things exist, but uh, not very often. This is the real grunt work of removing soil and sediment. And, spiders. Yeah, spiders, little uh, crickets. And one of the things that we talked about was that, you know, this thing a couple hundred years ago was up on a cliff face. It reminds me of uh, a couple years ago when they found Queen Hatshepsut's tomb in Egypt. She was the only woman pharaoh. And uh, uh, I've been to her. She has a big palace in the near the Valley of the Kings. But they found her tomb way up on the side of the cliff face. The only way to get in there was to rappel down. So it, it's common in ancient times that if you had somebody of well-known or status, that not always, but certainly in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt is a good example where, you know, they would dig these things underground and then cover them all up with sand and they're just even some of them are still unexposed but this thing being up where it is is it's interesting i mean it, it looks it looks more than just a uh 
you know, crack in the side of a, of a cliff. Oh, this is very tunnel. This looks is very much a tunnel. Yeah, it looks intentional. Yeah. Uh, have we found any artifacts yet? We've been shoveling out so we, much. We found, um, we found a serrated blade in here in some of, and we haven't really been sifting. So there's a lot that we're losing, but we did find a very clearly uh, serrated knife. So would you, uh, would you like to tell the audience what it is that we're supposedly after? Well, the, the, uh, that's a great question. So in this area, um, a couple hundred years ago, they excavated some giants out of some of the mounds. And uh, so we've been doing some work because the mounds are now underwater. And so they excavated them back in 1930. But anyway, so, so there's been uh, testimonies of, of large skeletons found in this area. And then with this particular cliffside, it looked very, we're, we're gonna do some measurements here because it's uh, at preliminary measurements, it, the, it lines up with the summer solstice sunset. And so uh, based now that we're far enough back into the cave, we'll be able to get some exact measurements um, for the summer solstice angle. Um, but it's, it looks promising. What's the key to that with the with the solstice? Why is that so important? You know, ancient times, whether, you know, Stonehenge is a great example, others that they wanted to show their sophistication or their worship of astrology, of, of the, the stars, of the alignments, the sun, um, just part of the ritual culture. But again, it was worship generally. And so part of it too was dealing with the afterlife. So, you, you know, either the sun, whatever mythology you might have, the sun setting or the sun rising. Generally, it's it's facing the east towards the sunrise. Uh, but the way that this particular um, little cave faces, the only option would be the summer solstice at the sunset because it's facing towards like a northeast. No, or I'm sorry, like a northwest. And in the latitude, everything it changes exactly which direction. The more south you go, the more. Uh, west northwest you are in the sense of a summer solstice but the more north you go it's gonna that that summer setting is gonna go more towards the north northwest the farther uh, increased of your latitude so it's it's really interesting so the fact that it's lining up close to that we're gonna again do some measurements to me that that's another little hint there's a lot of hints some of them come to nothing but at least we have hypotheses and that's yeah. what researchers do. And, and this looks promising because we've already found artifacts. Mm -hmm. And because of the lore of the area, yeah. there's there's potential something. Now, yeah, this, this is the type of debris that we're having to dig up. It's just thick sediment. And keep grabbing these rocks behind you and show people the type of tools that we're using. This is the type of rock. And I mean, every inch is sandwiched in between thick sediment and these rocks. Yep. So we're, this is not fast. No, and it, re it reminds me of some of the work they did, they've done in the Delta uh, in Egypt mm -hmm. because of the flooding. So uh, this particular cave floods every year because of the, the new, the newly built reservoir. And so all the work that we're doing now most likely will be covered with sediment a year from now. So all the work we're doing, it's kind of, it's again, that's what they did in Egypt. They'd have to dig it out, they'd have to use pumps, be back the next year trying to keep it out trying to keep it you know but they often had to f refill it because of people in egypt uh, doing their um, farming so they had an agreement let us dig it out we spend one season okay anyways so yeah the leaf's moving that's inside that hole which tells me that there's another chamber that's mm -hmm. dragging the air in there and plus, when you get up in there, you can feel the cool air coming out, which, I mean, it's 95 degrees plus today. Yeah. So that you can feel the cold air coming from somewhere inside there, which that's, which is moving that, that leaf. Now that's at least two or 300 more pounds of material. <laughs> I know. That's gonna and it's moved. like muddy. This is work, man. Yeah, that's worse because yeah. at that point, we're going to have to be moving it on our stomach. Yep. Well, that's what I'm hoping that we go down here so we don't do any of that. I mean, I, I think, you know, and honestly, like if we wanted to make this easier on us, if we went another two feet down. Yeah, that's why I, I two like to do that. Two feet down and then start yep. digging in. That's I. That's what I did at the other place is you go two feet down, dig a hole, and then it's really easy going that way. Yeah. I'm, Otherwise, I don't like digging on my stomach. No, or on, my, or on my knees anymore. Yeah, I'm not this interested. Start, in it. Yeah, I'm not interested. To hurt. I'd love to be able to at least 
you know, for me, not you, but I'm short, but I could probably stand and then just shovel the, the rock. Well, what, what's interesting is while we're doing this, we're, we're pulling back so much uh, debris, but the amount of charcoal that we found. Oh yeah, lots of charcoal in here, which has been, we almost found like a whole piece of, a piece of a log. That was really nice. But the edges, what I find interesting is the edges of the walls. It's not just caving in, you know, on itself, like coming into maybe like an elliptical circle. You know, no, like, this was filled in. Yeah, this, this is filled in. I think this is filled in Either they covered it originally, which maybe, or the sediment of it flooding, which again, you know, you have a hundred years of flooding in and out. Yeah. It's gonna bring some sediment in, um, depending on the storms. And I mean, you know, as we're pulling by this wall, this is all flaking off. Yep. You know, so, and everything's going like this. The tunnel originally was like this, and now it's, it's kind of widening out at the bottom. It's like a perfect uh, Roman arch with a point at the top. Yeah. the way that it looks designed so it's really kind of cool um all right well yeah let's I get to it we'll get back at it okay so we're ending the uh, digging for the day and uh, the hole that we got into went very tight and and it's it's shaped just like this the tunnel but then it just gets narrower and narrower and uh spiders are everywhere but there's, uh, there's still places where we could potentially get into. Here, let me just show you real quick. All the way back into here. And it keeps going another couple feet. But I'm going to let Mondo explain why we're stopping for the day, but why this may still be promising. So, Mondo, why could this potentially still be promising with all the work that we've well, done? Well, number one... When we get down in there, we feel even more cold air coming through. Yeah. So it's not recycled coming in like this. It's fresh air. Yeah, it's blowing through. It's and it's really really nice. Uh, secondly, we haven't we found a floor, which is a really smooth, super smooth floor, and it seems very very um, even all the way on both sides. It seems almost channeled. Uh, the way I see it, it's got a, it's got an up, upper part and it channels down like almost like a bowl. I'll show this. I don't know if you can see that right there, especially that way. You can see how it's channeled there and it does it on both sides. So, um, until we follow this floor all the way to the end and get all that debris out, which we're almost there as we're just running out of time. So we have that, we have the nice smooth floor, which we've dug out. We have the cool, cool air. And just the overall, um, there's no comfortable way to sorry, sit yeah. here. Just the overall comfortable nature of of, of, of the way that this the way that this cave is looking. Honestly, yeah. I mean it's it's pretty amazing how it's just it's like we're hoping that it goes over there and then the floor goes down. And I swear we've moved a ton of weight. Oh, easy. easy. We, I mean, all we've used is five gallon buckets, shovels, and trowels. We. Hey, look, there's a place I can sit. There you go. We, uh, we broke one shovel, and then we just broke another <laughs> tool. And, you know, we're just chewing through rock. As you see behind us, this is what we're yeah. chewing through. But it's not just this thick limestone, but it's limestone slate. <sighs> like, here, let's see. That sucker right there, 80-pound stone. And it's just multiple of that everywhere. And sorry, if we're kind of discombobulated yeah. here. And we're hot. <laughs> yeah, we can we can finally get to where we can somewhat stand. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, the lower part of my back is at the roof. You know, and, and Mondo standing straight up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a this was work. We've been out here for at least eight hours. Yeah, no, we did. So. We're going to go see another uh, bluff shelter cave where there's uh, a lot of arrowhead points that were found. Pottery was found. Yeah, I found some pottery there. Uh, but it's just such a huge area. It's too hard for us to, to manage right now by ourselves. But we'll be back. We'll be back. We're not leaving this alone. And we're going to have to finish this right here. Yeah, we're going to get our, our friend Brenton here. <laughs> we're going to work him. It's, it's his turn now. Yeah, his turn. Yeah. All right. Well, we're signing off. We'll see you at the other cave. Doug, making it out. 
can't walk out of that? No, then I walked can't. right out. I didn't think I had to duck my head. All right. Brutal. Yeah, that was brutal. Ah. There we go. Don't bump me. Lord. Oh, there's a second wasp nest. Oh my God. And there's another wasp nest. Usually they're pretty docile. But... What are you doing? Come here with some wasp spray. <sighs> it's like somebody's been excavating. That's what we did. All right, let's let's let people know what you did. So, if you come over here, that's kind of made it hard to see. This was completely covered. So, we saw the little cavity. We started digging, and. Right on the left side of that wall, I found some really nice pottery. That's, that's where I found the pottery that I shared, shared, shared with you guys, as well as probably 30 to 40 uh, shells, uh, really beautiful shells uh, for whatever, lots of, um, lots of charcoal in there. Surprisingly, we didn't find any arrowheads. Now over here, so you can see what we're doing is, where these rocks are, that's the back wall. And the wall is, you can see it there. So the next time that we're here, we wanna excavate along get bust this rock get it out and then go along that sidewall because this stuff from the ceiling is dropping down on this and it's just putting everything in there it's, see it's kind of sealing it right here is where he found the cache of arrowheads underneath those rocks in which we threw those rocks from here and over there so we're going to end up having to do it again but um that's where he found the cache wayne did so he's been up here quite a bit he was also over here, he found a whole bunch of charcoal or fire pits, which now has been covered because we threw all that debris there. But, I mean, this this took us all day. You can see that we worked really hard. Yeah, that's a lot of moving. That's a lot of moving. Oh, man. I mean, that's a 500-pound that's a rock. Yeah, we took out, I wish you were here the day, because we took out about a 100-pound rock, and we, it, we, we had to wrap it in string, which you probably would have just grabbed it and threw it out, but... We, it took, we had to put it in a string and then two people, both of us, just to get it up. One, it was one of those. We couldn't. But that thing, we were like, well, just bring a chisel. Because um, we didn't want to get too far in there because it's only held up by that little 
Yeah, I can I can see now where y'all said oh, there might be a danger of a fall in. Yeah, we're like, mm, it's not worth it. But you can see the back wall. Again, we, we went through both sides. And we it just goes along. And again, that, it's interesting that that was completely 100% covered. But the pottery was down in there. So, yeah, I mean, this is hundreds of years, thousands of years. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look at it. It goes, I mean, all the way. This thing's huge. I mean, and it's It's crazy. like we're inside a spacecraft. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because even the wind, like... Oh, there's, look, there's more wasp nests up there. Oh, yeah, all over. They're all the way along the whole edge. And we had, like, there's a waterfall that comes down here. You can hear it dripping. But when we were here a couple months ago, it was flowing down. So it comes right from the top. It's really, really pretty. But this would be a perfect place because you have the water. And then secondly, you're, you're blocked from the north wind. And you're, yeah, this is a, a legit cove. Yeah. Yep. So this, of course, it's 100 years ago. It wasn't a cove because there's no water here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was, this was a, the tip, this is a typical bluff. Yep. Shelter. Because about 30 yards or no, maybe longer out oh. there was the river. Yeah. Oh, way in the middle. Yeah. Center. So you, yeah, you got a couple hundred yards. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. I mean, this would be a great, but you can see all the, again, the ceiling is, is crumbling all along here, covering up, just sealing into place, whatever, you know, um, artifacts. This is a giant tomb. That's what this is. Well, you know into. what? He, he thinks, he thinks that there's, he thinks there's a big guy there. I don't know. I don't know what his, his you can ask him what his reasoning is. Um, we, we, we are in the land where the lore of giants yeah, is alive. Right down there is where the yeah. mines are. Yeah. In the water, under the water. So, I mean, this makes sense that they would live. It, well, anybody, there's definitely been human habitation up here. There's no doubt about that. So, that uh, concludes what we were able to get for the day. Uh, the area that we're in has a lot of witness testimony of generational stories of people from the 20s and 30s, 40s, 50s, finding giant skeletal remains within these areas. People were exhuming bodies. They, uh, they had mounds everywhere. This is a large natural lake. There were two rivers that connected into this lake. And between where the original cave was that we started with the excavation, and then the exploration of the other bluff shelter cave, which was the, the actual first excavation of this area, uh, we're finding remains of what could have been a society, obviously, the, the, the Native American society, but we're looking for more than just that, right? And... You know, we, we follow leads that we get, and, you know, you, you have to verify stories, uh, and a lot of times that's hard. We don't want to verify stories through, you know, a, a, a chat form or, you know, through online research. We want to go and get our hands into the soil and verify it for ourselves, and we were able to do that uh, out here in this area. And there's a lot of unexplored areas that we also went to. We got a little bit of video of, but not enough really to put it into this. Plenty to explore. Now, I will say this. Do I expect to see giant skeletons? I don't know. Um, we, Like I said, we are, we're finding tools, uh, flint knives and points and tool-making stones. And in this area that we're at, you know, there was uh, mounds are everywhere from uh, prior it being a, a man-made lake. Uh, the, the whole area, the landscape was covered in mounds. So we know that where there are mounds, there are burial mounds and there are civilizations that end up living on top of burial mounds. And this whole area from Native American lore to explorations that it came up there in the 1800s. And then from excavations that happened in the 1900s, that there were giants, there were giant skeletal remains, or at least that is what has been documented. Now, you know, you got to understand that back in the 1900s, giant skeletal remains were confused for mastodon bones and dinosaur bones and giant ground sloths and all that other stuff. 
uh, you know, that would be cool too to find. But that's not what we're after. We're after a biblical narrative here. And one of the reasons why I think it's real good what we're doing is that, you know, we're not out here to disrupt Native American tradition, heritage, or ancestral sites. If anything, what we're really trying to accomplish is we're trying to bring to light that the Native American culture, especially regarding one of their great enemies, the giants, has been covered up. It's been, uh, the stories have been manipulated by uh, archaeologists in the past. And we know that the Smithsonian Institute had a part of it. The U.S. government had a part of it. And we just have to ask ourselves, why? Why would you uh, not want to disclose such an amazing find? And with this, you know, within this area, we're, we're hearing tales of, oh, yeah, over there, so-and-so found an eight-foot skeleton. Over here, we found a series of seven-and-a-half-foot skeletons sitting upright in a sitting position, which actually is starting to be a common theme with the places that we've gone, because we've gone to other places and not documented. And there's reasons why we haven't done that. Uh, but we have seen and had witness testimony so far where for whatever reason, a lot of these skeletons are being found in a upright sitting position, very ceremonial. So we're hoping that at the bottom of this uh, tomb that's in the cliff, and that's, what, that's kind of what we've come to call it now, is potentially a giant skeleton. Now, you know, there were giants uh, within the Native American population that were very natural, uh, people who had uh, just very large stature or, you know, may have had any type of genetic problems and, and grew very, very large. But that's not what we're talking about, guys. You know what we're talking about. We're talking about the other giant. The six-fingered, the red hair, all, all the stuff you guys know. So that's what we're after. And we have to track down the lore. And then we have to make uh, the lore match the landscape to make sure we're in the right area. And from there, it's just digging until you find something. And that area that we were in inside this cave, I mean, you had maybe three and a half feet on either side. You could barely move a shovel. And we ended up getting a short-handled shovel, and we would have to sit down and actually scoop by a sitting position that we eventually dug. Uh, we were able to get about two and a half feet down originally where we were until we found a solid rock floor. And I mean a smooth, like concrete slab, smooth floor. So we estimate that uh, the height of this little tomb is about four and a half feet so far. Uh, maybe I may be wrong when I say that, but I believe that's about where it's at. And about three and a half feet wide. You know, I'm six foot tall, so uh, I have to be completely bent over when I'm, I'm walking through there. And Mondo did, unfortunately, most of the digging because you know, he, being of smaller stature, he can move around a lot easier. And Mondo's just a machine, by the way. That's such an awesome, cool guy to get to know now. Uh, and it's cool to actually, you know, be on an archaeological dig with an archaeologist. And we're, you know, we're not just, we're not at a, uh, a university funded dig. We're out there doing some Indiana Jones stuff. So it's really cool. Uh, we did use a, uh, we did use a metal detector initially when we went in, uh, a Garrett 300 metal detector to see if we could find anything, didn't find anything metal. Uh, didn't pick up any trace iron or, or silver or gold. Uh, it may change if we get lower into the cavern. But for right now, uh, we're going to leave it where it is. We'll be back there in a couple weeks. And at that point in time, the way we're looking at it is we have to move remove about 12 cubic feet worth of debris. So probably 300 pounds worth of debris. And then we'll be at the entrance of a chamber that we're getting a lot of blasting cold air through, which just felt great. Um, and if it is anything similar to the pyramids that are in Egypt, 
this chamber will then go down at about a 45 degree slant inwards towards the rest of the cave and we should open up to a chamber. Now the problem will be that we've had, there has been so much backflow of water ever since this area was turned into a man-made lake that you know we, we had to remove almost three feet thick worth of sediment where we were standing on. How thick and, and, and uh, you know, extraneous this is going to be if it does go at a 45 degree slant and all that debris is just lodged downward. Uh, it's going to be very challenging. There's no machinery that we can put in there. There's no room to, to move side by side. It's, it's hard just to pass one another most of the time. If you have a bucket, you have to be the guy who stands at the mouth of the cave to, that walks in about 30 feet, grabs a bucket at a completely bent over at the, at the waist uh, and, and walking out with you know a 50, 60 pound bucket back and forth, back and forth. That's back breaking. And then the digging is back breaking. And if it goes further down and at an angle, there's going to be way more than what we thought but you can already see what looks to be the top of a chamber. We saw it, so we know there's something else in there. And and this looks very man-made. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, I'm not a geologist, so if you're a geologist, by all means, please comment on this. But it looks very similar to what you would think a man-made structure would be. I don't know how in the hell they carved into it, uh, but you know, megalithic sites... Hey, man, we don't have very many explanations for them. So, you know, uh, wish us best of luck. We we ask for your prayers. Uh, if you want to help donate to what we're doing, you can go to theamericanvindictiveshow.com and donate. Uh, it, it just, it's a lot of manpower to do this. And we're going to end up having to get a couple 20-somethings and their young, strong backs in there because it's, it is backbreaking, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's... I'm still recovering. It's been at least two days now. So, like I said, we'll get back into it again, and we'll videotape everything. Hopefully, it'll be a much uh, a, a much cooler video next time because we're going to be crawling into a chamber, and we have no idea what's in there. No idea. No idea what booby traps could be in there. It could be a, you know, the lost city of gold down there or a, an eight-and-a-half-foot giant skeleton. Who knows? It uh, could also just be a damn raccoon's nest. So, you know, wish us best of luck. This is what archaeology looks like. I'm so thankful that God has put me on this path, uh, that I can do this now. I, I can, you know, live out the dreams that I wanted to when I was a kid. So, praise God. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Remember this. Times are getting turbulent. Train, prep, pray. Stay frosty. The enemy's out there.